Hello, my good friends. How are you doing today? BT5, episode 13 of Science. So, yes, we are this far in the series already. So, if you guys are interested in this, go check out my new channel, BT5 Science. Of course, it's in the description down there. And uh, soon we'll start making videos on there. Of course, I'm going to finish up my BT5 series first, but we will head on over there. So the electromagnetic force, super interesting force, by far my favorite force, and I think there's a lot to talk about. Hopefully I didn't make this video, um, hopefully I don't make this video too long because I have a lot to talk about today. So basically when you think about the electromagnetic electromagnetic force, you have to think about all the things that it has to deal with in just your regular everyday life. Besides gravity, that's pretty much the only one that's going to affect you. Uh, electromagnetic force has to do with making things solid, making things liquid, making things gases, things like that. It also has to deal with a lot of atoms. Every single atom is affected by the electromagnetic force and every single compound and all these things connected together electromagnetic force. Also, what keeps you alive, the uh, magnetic field that goes around Earth, electromagnetic force, all that stuff has to deal with just this one single force. Next thing you have to know is that electricity causes magnetism, and magnetism causes electricity. So they're basically the same thing in just a different form. Uh, it's kind of hard to grasp, but hopefully by the end of the video you'll maybe understand why or how this happens, and just understand it a little bit better. If you don't understand it fully, that's okay. It's okay. It takes a while to understand these things. But if you just understand it a little bit better, I think I did my job. So uh, the next thing you need to know is that all electromagnetic waves do travel at the speed of light, but they may seem to go slower depending on the meteor they are traveling in. And there's a very few exceptions to that rule. I know they they just stopped light. I didn't read up on that. I don't know how they did that or or I don't know any of the details of that really. But I do know that they did it and it's basically proven. So I'm finding that extremely interesting and I'm not going to go into super crazy details with that right now. But uh, electromagnet electromagnetic waves do travel at the speed of light and things like uh, sound waves are not electromagnetic waves so those travel a lot slower so we'll get to the details of why sound waves are not electromagnetic waves later but for now just trust me on that so let's go over electricity really fast electricity is just a phenomena phenomenon involving electric charges so a couple of quick examples are static electricity and lightning and when you're talking about electric charge all you're thinking of is a bunch of positives in a certain area and a bunch of negatives in a certain area and they don't want to be together they want to spread out and to and be happy together so they want positive and wants to be next to negative so uh, what happens is if, if you walk on the carpet really quick and you just rub your socks on the carpet, you're going to get a bunch of little positives built up. You made a bunch of positives on you, and then if you touch a person, you're going to cause them to get shocked. You're going to send a little bit of positive energy towards them. So that's basically what an electric charge is. It's just a little bit of static electricity or something. Of course, lightning is a lot of that. It's a lot of that happening, but... Uh, not quite as important to understand that just yet. So magnetism. So what is what is magnetism? Well, I mean, there's kind of two different ways to explain magnetism. But um, the first one is, is you guys have probably heard of uh, Earth's magnetic field. It, of course, keeps us safe, extremely safe from a bunch of stuff that comes, a bunch of harmful stuff that comes from the sun. So all you really need is you need a bunch of metal moving, and this metal moving, uh or electric charges moving around causes the magnetic field so we that's how we cause a magnetic field of earth is just we have a rotating metal core a rotating specific more specifically mostly iron core or re rather outer core whatever you guys want to say don't just don't get mad at me for saying those things so and then there's also little tiny magnets so if you don't think about the giant forms of earth's magnetic field you can talk about the little magnets so if you ever have held one of those little bar magnets you have like a, nor a north side and a south side why does that happen uh, well, we'll get a little bit. We'll get into a little bit more detail about that, about why that later. But just a really quick uh, explanation. If you guys don't understand that yet, this yet, it's okay. Basically, you have a bunch of positive. You have like uh, a bu bunch of little things inside this magnet, and they have a positive side and they have a negative side. And if you get all these positives lined up one way, and you have all the negatives lined up another way, it causes it to have magnetism. And that's really all a magnet is, is a bunch of charges on one side, a bunch of negatives on the other, or rather they're all facing the same direction. They're not really all on one side and all the other because they're actually really, really small. But they're all pointing in the same way, and that causes it to have a magnetic field around it. So um, now you have to understand what the ma what it transfers with. Like how is an electromagnetic wave transferred around? It's not a regular wave. So if you think about a wave like an ocean or a sound wave, you think about those going up and down and up and down, or you think about like a wave in a stadium causes uh, one side goes up and it causes the next person to go up and so on and so on and so on. Electromagnetic waves do not exactly work like that. They're actually caused by because we said that electricity causes magnetism and magnet magnetism causes electricity. Uh, when you have some sort of pretend light is traveling in a straight line. But don't think about that 
that light is traveling up and down and up and down and up and down is not. So if you ever thought about a light wave and why it why if it was going up and down, it'd actually be traveling faster than the speed of light. It's not because it's still just going straight. All it is is just you have an electric field that goes up and then a magnetic field that goes uh, down or up or whatever. It doesn't really matter which one it is. But that's what we think about. It's just a changing field propagates uh, propagates it further and further and further. That's all it is. Um, it basically causes itself to happen. It's kind of hard to explain exactly because it's, it's like calling it a wave, but it isn't a wave. We're just saying it goes up and we're saying it goes down because that's just an ex easy example of how to explain it. It doesn't ever actually go up and it doesn't ever actually go down, but the electric the uh, electric field will go up and then the magnetic field will go up and then the electric field will go up and then the magnetic field will go up. So you could think about it like that, just keep going up and up and up and up, but it never gets higher or anything. I don't know, maybe I explained that bad. Hopefully I, you guys understand it just a little bit better. So how are different waves formed? So we're talking about the electromagnetic field and we're talking about all the different things that could possibly come from these things. It's not just light. There's a lot of different things that come from these. And let's go over uh, something quick, and then I'll go over every single type of wave that does come from electromagnetic uh, fields. So, wavelength. How does wavelength affect these things? Basically, a wavelength, one wavelength, is from the peak of one electric field changing back to the peak of a magnetic field, and back down to, or back to another peak of an electric field. That is one wavelength. And that's what we define as a wavelength, of course. It doesn't really matter. You can go with half wavelength, whatever you want to make it whatever you want to make it as, but that's what one wavelength technically is. And uh, also you have to know that the smaller the wavelength, the more energy you have. So we don't usually think about it like that. If you think about a wavelength, it gets bigger, it's getting massive and more energy. No, wrong. The smaller the wavelength, the more energy you have, and also the more damage it causes. So smaller wavelengths, bad, or more dangerous, or deadly, or bad for us. Higher wavelengths, not quite so bad, don't really affect us, no big deal, whatever, they just exist, they kind of happen. And they're kind of easy to make as well. So now here, what are the biggest, what are the uh, smallest or strongest electromagnetic waves? You guys have probably heard of these. These are gamma gamma waves. So gamma waves, you hear about these when a sun, when like a star explodes or um, that gets released by black holes or quasars or things like that. These are those gamma rays, and those gamma rays are extremely, extremely dangerous. If you get hit by a gamma ray, it's going to cause cancer and stuff. X-rays, still very dangerous. X-rays are super unbelievably tiny. Um, still, uh, when you're talking about these wavelengths, they are really, really tiny. When you have like when you have visible light, it's about uh, 400 to 700 nanometers. But then once you get to gamma rays, it's about a million times smaller than that. So we're talking about nanometers, which are a one billionth of a meter. And then you're talking about something even a million times smaller than that. So that's how small these uh, gamma rays actually are and how small these x-rays are as well. Those guys are pretty tiny as well. Maybe not a million times, but a thousand times ish smaller than uh, visible light. Then ultraviolet light. This is like what the sun makes and it's kind of dangerous for us. If you get it on your skin and you get too much of it, you get burnt. Also, you have to understand that if that the atmosphere is blocking out a lot of this ultraviolet light, we don't get all of it. If we were out in space and we were just getting ultraviolet light, we would get burned basically instantaneously. Basically. Uh, and then we get to, finally here, we get to visible light. So this is what we think about all, every single day. All is visible light. Yay, our sun makes a lot, of it, a lot of visible light. That's what we see. Most of it is visible light. Not all of it, of course. Not all of it's visible light, but most of it is visible light. A lot of stars and stuff will actually not release all visible light. They'll release a lot of x-rays or a lot of um, ultraviolet light and stuff like that. And we can't see that. We actually evolved based more on the sun. We, If we were near some sort of other star and we somehow magically survived with all this ultraviolet light, we'd probably see an ultraviolet light. But it's a good thing that we didn't because uh, that would cause a lot more mutations and probably would not allow us to actually evolve that far. But anyways, visible light, it's between about 400 to 700 nanometers. So it's a really, really small amount of wavelengths right there. That's only 300 nanometers of stuff that we can actually see. When we're talking about a billion times smaller and a million times smaller, and uh, when you get up to bigger bigger waves, which are billions of times bigger than that, whoa, that's kind of crazy to think that that little tiny small sliver makes up all the light that we see. Every single ounce of light that goes and bounces off something and goes into our eyes is between 400 and 700 nanometers. Otherwise, we can't see it. 
We just plain can't see it. And then once you get to a little bit bigger, oh, also, oh, colors. I have to explain the colors really fast. So for the 400 to 700 nanometers, depending on what that wavelength is, is what makes it a certain color. So when you have like a 400 nanometer uh, wavelength, you get more towards the violet end or more towards the purplish end. If you think about a rainbow, a rainbow is just all those wavelengths mixed together. So you get a bunch of the, you get a little bit of the 400 and you get a little bit of the a little bit more of the 450, 500, and then you also get like a max of like 550 or so right around there. Right in the middle is where you get like the most of it. And then you get, of course, up to about 700 nanometers, which is a bigger wave, and that's where you get all your red light and stuff. The orangish and the reddish is right around 700. So that's pretty much all we have for visible light. I hope that I made it clear that that small sliver of, of light is what we think of as visible light. And then we get uh, infrared radiation, which is just basically, if you ever heard of infrared goggles, that's kind of like heat vision. Yeah, we got heat vision. That's just a little bit bigger wavelength than that. And then microwaves. Microwaves, are, we're finally getting to a point where we actually understand how big these things are. So if you've heard of a centimeter, a centimeter is uh, about 2... about... Uh, 2.5 centimeters make up an inch. So an inch is just a little bit more than a centimeter, so if you want to pretend like that, that's okay, it's fine, you can pretend like it's an inch. But microwaves are about an inch, you know, of course these range quite a bit as well. Uh, it's not just exactly this much is a microwave, and this much is infrared radiation. It's kind of just a gradual change, and eventually it's kind of hard to tell exactly when one changes into the next. Uh, and then we got like I said, microwaves, which is about a centimeter, and then radio waves. So you guys have, of course, heard of radio waves. Oh, yeah, we listen to the radio all the time. When we listen, we listen to radio waves. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. These guys can be huge, gigantic, mega unbelievable. They can be kilometers long, hundreds of kilometers long, these radio waves. So I just think that's kind of ridiculous how big these guys can get. So that's basically the electromagnetic spectrum, um, but the force also has to do with positives and negatives and atoms as well. So it's not just the electro electromagnetic spectrum, it has to do with other things as well. So if you think about electrons and atoms, the electrons are basically bound by the electromagnetic wave mechanics into orbitals around this atom. So that's why electrons are in these certain uh, positions around an atom. It's because of the wave mechanics that is caused by electromagnetism. So how does a magnet work? Well, I, I feel like I went through most of that stuff. That stuff is pretty reasonably complicated. Now let's talk about a little bit of an easier thing. Yay, how does a magnet work? I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. So you have a bunch of little, let's just pretend like we have a bunch of little pieces inside this magnet. And all these pieces have a little tiny dipole, which a dipole means that one side's a little bit more positive, one side's a little bit more negative. And all you got to do to make a magnet is if you make all of these positives line up the exact same way and all the negatives line up the exact opposite way, you basically form a magnetic field because of these electric charges. So that's basically how you form a magnet. With one side's more positive and one side's more negative, boom, you got a magnet. And then that's what causes, if you have two positives and you try and put them together, they like to repel. If you have a positive and negative, they attract. That's all it really is. That's all a magnet is, guys. It's just basically electric charges. So uh, one last thing I also wanted to mention, why are sound waves not electromagnetic waves? I feel like this is an important aspect that you guys should probably understand about electromagnetic waves. Um, just three reasons really quick why they're not, and then we're going to end the video. So all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which I mentioned before. Uh, the speed of sound is much, 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 much slower. It's about a million times slower, a little bit less than a million times slower, but about that. Also, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, which basically means we get a changing electric field to a changing magnetic field. It's not really, uh, it's not really something going up and down and up and down. It's just two changing fields. That's all it is. But then you have sound waves, and those are longitudinal longitudinal waves. So basically, you have something that pushes something else, and then it pushes more atoms, and you just push things away from each other, and that's how you get sound. Number three, sound waves need a medium to travel through. So yeah, if you didn't have air, like in space, and you tried to yell, nothing would come out. Sound would not exist in space because it has nothing to travel to travel through. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves do not. If you notice, the light comes from the sun, goes through space, then eventually hits Earth and hurts, hits us, hits our face and things like that. So that's why we can actually see the light coming from the sun, but we also can't hear it because it doesn't push atoms out of the way. It doesn't do things like that. Uh, 
very much at all compared to sound waves. So anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys want to like this for me, much, much appreciated. If I had got a little bit confused in any of these areas and you want a better explanation of things, ask me. I'll do my best to answer in the comments. So uh, have a good one.